So everybody wants a pond in the garden. It's a great idea. You can have two types of pond. You can have ponds for fish. I've got one over there. Um, all its own problems, protecting the fish from the heron, the amount of uh, poo that the fish put into the water. Then you need lots of filtration. Difficult to keep clean. Lots and lots of work. The second type of pond is a wildlife pond. One behind me. This wildlife pond, believe it or not, is just a year old. Um, for my second pond, I didn't want to dig a hole, I wanted to put it above ground. It's easy. Everyone can put a pond above ground. You uh, can site it pretty much anywhere you like. Uh, I've made mine out of railway sleepers. Eight foot and cut in half, four foot. The only thing that you have to make sure is that the top of the pond is level, um, decent spirit level, and away you go. I mean, uh, construction, I'll go into the construction in a minute, I'll, I'll throw up some pictures of how it was made and explain, but it really was very simple. It was just finding the right piece of ground. I had a piece of ground that we'd just built a garage. It was rubble. It was never going to be a nice border. It wasn't big enough to do anything with. I just thought, yeah, I'll have a wildlife pond here. So made the framework out of the sleepers, lined the bottom of the pond uh, with some red sand and then placed a piece of old carpet. Then off the internet bought the liner, a butyl liner, where they they claimed it was an underlay, it was very thin felt, but it, it was okay to put it. And then it, in went the, the liner and in went the water. The water stretched the liner out and I literally just nailed the liner to the tops of the sleepers. I haven't really uh, got any further than that yet. It was one of those jobs I'll figure out how to finish it. I haven't got round to it. Now, being an above ground pond, it's the same depth pretty much throughout. Uh, you need a shallow end for a wildlife pond. Um, I have at this end a huge pile of Scottish cobbles uh, with a crate in the bottom to hold them all so that there is uh, an end that the, the birds and things can get into shallow water, anything that goes into the pond can find its way out and climb out. I also have ramps leading up to get in. Um, I have at the back of the pond, I don't know where you can see, I've got logs laid out, pieces of slate overhanging the water, creating shadows, areas for things to live in. Um, depending on the space that you've got, those are the types of things you need. So, it's been here a year, literally 12 months. So in those 12 months, we've had frogs, um, tadpoles, obviously, water boatmen, pond skaters, a great diving beetle a couple of months ago, uh, which I believe they fly in. A uh, very, very big thing. I mean, we're talking like sort of this sort of size. Quite scary to see it swimming around in the water. Uh, water fleas. Uh, Mayflies, dragonflies, water snails, lots and lots of little larva swimming around inside. I mean, the, the larva from all the flying insects that turn up, so the dragonflies, the mayflies, caddisflies, uh, whirligig beetles, uh, freshwater shrimp, snails, um, newts. We've had a couple of newts. Newts was the one I really wanted. Uh, there was actually a newt in the pond after about the first six weeks, which was quite amazing. Uh, don't know where it went. It was there for a few days and then disappeared again. I'm, I'm hoping that they'll be back soon to breed. Uh, fish. It's a wildlife pond. I've put nothing in it other than the plants. Um, there's two fish. I'm led to believe that the fish can be brought in as eggs on the legs of any type of water bird. So the heron does come every now and again and have a look. Uh, we've had, even though my fish pond is not a lot bigger than this, we've had ducks land on the fish pond. Uh, could have been eggs on the plants that I bought, but there's two fish in there. Um, talking of plants, you can see everything's going right. The one at the back is water mint. It just takes off, grows great. So I've Put water mint in there. I've got something called water soldiers. They're all around. Um, Aladea, which is the like sort of oxygenating plant. It's in the bottom. There's various types of small water lily. Uh, just go, go to your local uh, water gardens, take some advice. 
you want obviously small plants I think the water mint's gonna have to be cut back regularly and that's it I mean what what a year in here it is it's absolutely bursting with life there is stuff everywhere we spend every evening come out for 10-15 minutes and just sit and look currently watching the uh, the tadpoles grow their legs right I'll uh, show you a few pictures of how it was made and how I made the containers to hold the plants around the edge and then uh, a couple of before and after pictures thank you for watching